day to you all. I'm very happy to awaken some of my memories about uh, Marstella College Choir, which later had a rebirth with a new name, St. Marcellus Choir. Uh, it was in 2005, this uh, transition began. Of course, Marstella College Choir as old as the Marcella College itself, there must have been many teachers, the students who have been part of this long tradition. At that time, under the guidance of Brother Clinton Pereira, the principal, then we invited uh, Mr. Francis Almeida to take the responsibility as the trainer of our choir. He accepted it but with one condition. He said, uh, I'll do it for about a uh, few months, till the end of this year. Later, I'll arrange someone, one of my students to uh, continue. So, well, we started that way. And around that time, we had some uh, very golden opportunities to perform also. There was an international uh, uh, conference of Maris Brothers running for about one month at the Gold Sand Hotel. Then on the final day, uh, there was a mass celebrated uh, with the participation of all the bishops of Sri Lanka. So we were invited to do the liturgical singing of that occasion. Then I can remember another opportunity that we had toward the end of the year, in the month of December, uh, St. Nicholas International College uh, of Nigambo invited our choir to perform as the uh, in their Christmas carols. Then finally, at the end of that year, I had to go away from the school. Then there was uh, uh, the transition of this uh, my responsibility as the master in charge. So this was a uh, growing as a newly born infant. So that it was a very uh, important decision. I remember with Brother Clinton who was finishing as the principal and Brother Sunanda who was starting uh, to, who was to take over. We decided and I proposed the name of uh, Mr. Roshan because uh, I saw he had the know-how of music, he had the organizational skills plus commitment. I'm very thankful to God for what the Marcella, uh, St. Marcellus Choir is doing at present. Thank you. Today, we proudly talk about the 15-year history of our choir, the St. Marcellus Choir. From the day we began until now, we have achieved so much, we have grown so much, but we cannot talk about these achievements and growth without this particular special person he is Francis D. Almeida, the choral director of our choir. Thank you, sir, for being here with us today for this interview. So, share with us how this journey began. Thank you, Shenol. Uh, the history starts, I think, somewhere in 2004, when there was a uh, staff member of this, in the administrative staff. He said that uh, he invited me to come and train the college choir, Maristella Choir. And I was hesitant because I was already coaching St. Uh, Nicholas's International School and Ave Maria. But anyway, Brother Nicholas is the one who spoke to me. And he said, please come and help us. Then I gave him a sort of an assignment, a challenge. Brother, bring your choristers or the Maristonians for our carols. That would have been probably 2003. Then I just forget, forgot about that. And when I was running around organizing to start to get the carol started, I saw a crowd, Brother Nicholas, with a number of boys. Then and there I decided that I must come. So that showed the interest. So that's how I came here, uh, maybe 2004, and uh, continued training. That's the genesis. Mr. Francis de Almeida, you have been coaching school choirs since 1966 for almost 55 years. So we don't have to argue and we don't have a doubt of your talent uh, because of the experiences that you have had throughout these years. 
and we are so lucky to have you as the choral director. Today we celebrate in this year the 15th anniversary of our choir and how does it feel to be a part of the St. Mercedes Choir family? It's an extraordinary feeling. Uh, as you said, uh, from 1965 or 66, I have been training not only choirs but also basketball. Started actually with basketball and then came to choir. And uh, Maharashtra Choir is a unique place because there is so much of creativity in it. Even this very interview is a, a creative exercise that you are showing, and uh, that was not lacking. So, if because music is borders on creativity and expression. So if a choir has good uh, creative sort of atmosphere, the school has, then the choir also improves, grows in that. Uh, but more, more than that, we have also always had good leaders, outstanding leadership qualities we have had. That also may be part of the corporate culture here. And so I found it easy especially with uh, student leaders and all the students who want to go the extra mile think outside the box so that is how that is one of the main characteristics of uh, St. Marcelin Square uh, which I have seen for the last 16 years and also of course we have had some very good teachers masters Mr. Roshan Piris, Shania and so many others and good principals Brother Mervin who went out of the way and so, one of the most important uh, thing that happened during this time was a trip to uh, Rome. And uh, so, some of them, some of our boys, as well as Ave Maria girls, Good Shepherd and St. Joseph, he sang in front of the Pope and we did a Rome concert. So, that is a very unique position about uh, the Marcella Mar Choir. Also, you will find that the Maristonians have gone out and started their own choirs. So it has a multiplier effect. That is also out of their creativity. They have managed to get groups and they are outstanding in their own uh, uh, way. Even as a, when you compare with the other choirs in the country, they have, they are, they have the potential to out, out, outshine. So you have been in the choir for almost more than a decade. So you have worked with so many choristers and of course choir leaders. What kind of help that you received and what was, what kind of a connection that you had with the choir leaders and the choristers? It's a very good question that you asked. Actually I had to deal with uh, many choir leaders since the inception of the choir. They are like we had no like not much experience because uh, in 2006 uh, the choir was handed over to me by Brother Nicholas and since then I will ha I had to deal with these choir leaders. So Rajit at that time like you know he did a great job because it was he was a very first leader so like like it was like no idea like how can you continue it. So with the support of Rajita then we were able to like since then we were able to develop our choir with the other along with the other choir leaders. Because now I still remember like when we had to organize certain carol programs, how they worked. Uh, even at uh, during the day they broke sleep and they had to organize not only that they had to even like now when you organize the carols they had to find their money right so in that case they had to find their own money so they had to make like uh, find ways to, in making money time so i cannot forget the support that were given by those choir leaders who were in the past and uh, the sweet memories that i had with them i will never forget in my life See, so you are a remarkable person when we talk about the history of our choir. How do you feel now when you look back at those days, those golden days? Because you have put so much effort and you have dedicated your time to build this choir, as I said, more than a decade. So, what are the thoughts upon that? Yeah, actually I was handed over the year, uh, in 2006 the choir was handed over to me by Brother Nicholas and Brother Sunanda was the principal at that time. And since then, I had to like, you know, work hard in bringing up the choir because the first challenge I had to do was we didn't have enough members in the choir. So there were only very few. So I had to develop the number, the grow the number. So it was a like challenge for me. 
uh, because like in most cases you see like we had as I remember there were like uh, 7 to 8 up to like 10 to 12 members were there so since then I had to grow the number so with the help of the other music teachers and all who were there at that time we really supported and uh, since then uh, the number started increasing that one reason like the number started increasing first thing we had to like give a kind of a like boost in the choir unless uh, the number one to so we had to create some activities events so like in order to encourage them so with those sort of activities and with the help of the brother principals we were able to uh, like develop the number and uh, then also we had no name for the choir at that time so like we had like first to name the choir so i just named the choir as St. Marceline's Choir because if not like they were calling like Maristela Choir so like then I uh, named it as St. Marceline's Choir and since then like I'm really proud to say that now the choir has been well established well established and they are doing very well so when I see like uh, during the past for the 10 years like more than a decade I have been the choir master master in charge since then I see there's a vast progress in the choir so whenever I see, uh, I feel really proud of the choir as the master in charge at that time. Hi guys, for those who don't know me, I'm Rajita from the 2007 batch. When I got to know that our choir is celebrating 15 years, I was like, wow, has it been that long since we left school? But I still remember in 2005, how we wanted to establish a proper college choir and at that time my sister was in Ave Maria and then Sir Francis was training them and we saw a massive improvement in their standard and um, I was introduced to Sir Francis through my sister such an amazing personality uh, I really wanted to get him down to our school as well to train us and um, he he once um, invited me to come over to St. Joseph's to see them rehearsing and I went and I was literally just blown away. Um, I knew at that time that we had the talent in school, we just wanted someone like him to come and train us on the fundamentals of singing and the proper techniques. And Brother Nicholas was instrumental, he, he convinced the administration on this idea and we had him come over and train us every week. So there you go, that was the beginning. Um, so looking back now, I would just thank Brother Nicholas and Sir Francis for making it happen. And I can see that it has come a long way. So if I'm being absolutely honest here, I don't think I had a vision for the choir at that time. I wouldn't have been able to define what a vision should sound like at that time. But I knew that saying, you know, practice makes perfect. That's all I knew. And I wanted to make sure that we had practices every week. So even on the days that Sir Francis couldn't make it, I would just have half an hour session with the choir just to do the exercises so that we don't lose touch. So I'm pretty sure that you guys are much more advanced than now than um, what we used to be back in the day but um, music is always what brings us together. So just do what you're doing. Um, if you're uploading any videos of the choir just don't forget to tag us. And um, I'm so looking forward to come and see you perform live uh, at the carol service this year. So good luck and all the best to you. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. The person who is right next to me is whom we cannot skip when we talk about the history of our choir, the St. Mercedes Choir, because he he is the very first choir leader of our choir. Master Kasum Rajapaksha, we welcome you to the school and to the choir again and thank you for being here with us. Thanks a lot for inviting me and it is a really great pleasure to be here this morning with you guys. 
when you are celebrating this beautiful occasion of 15 years of the car. You were the choir leader back in 2007, 2007, 15 years ago, the very first choir leader. Becoming a choir leader is a durable experience, but becoming the first choir leader is something to be proud of. How all of this started and how do you feel when you look back at 2007 at yourself as the choir leader? Yeah, to start with, uh, we actually formed our choir back in 2005 uh, when uh, Brother Nicholas at that time invited us to join. And with that intention, myself and Mr. Rajita, uh, we tried to gather as much as people from our grade, when we were doing A-levels, from those grades and uh, from grade 6 above. And we could gather a few numbers for the start. And from 2005 to 2007, it was not a very sweet journey, but uh, with a lot of drawbacks from some ends, we finally could make it up to 2007 and start the mass carols from 2007 onwards. Now we have come for almost 15 years in this journey and it's true that we have to face ups and downs in a journey. But no secret that the St. Mercy's Choir has improved, it bloomed day by day, it increased and it improved the quality day by day. So how do you feel about the growth and all the achievements that the choir has made throughout these 15 years as the first choir leader of the St. Merslin's Choir? Yes, definitely. I think uh, this is the most proudest day of my life as a chorister. And because from the start, uh, even from the college, uh, we got a very minor support. But after the first year, the, the college staff, the Reverend Brothers principals, everyone came and supported. And even the parents, the choristers, even the students got motivated and they came up and delivered something new each year. It was, uh, it was not something that I did my all alone, but uh, I should especially mention uh, Mr. Lakshan Fernandu and Mr. Ramamare Mare and also Ashan Vimal Sekhara who were back with me, who fought for this event to be to put into the Marist calendar. That was not an easy task because uh, for, at the first period, People didn't know what is Western classical singing because it is kind of new to Nigambo. And it was a challenging task. But with the help of those people, the Reverend Brother Mervin and uh, Brother Nicholas as well, and Mr. Roshan Pires, and our beloved parents, they helped us a lot to make this event a reality. So even with some uh, difficulties, we could manage it. And after that, it Came, became an annual event and the choristers after that year took it to their hands and made it better each year. Master Ashan Vimalasekara, the choir leader of our choir, the St. Mercedes Choir for the year 2008, Thank you for coming here today, accepting our invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. You are the first conductor of our choir in our history. I see conducting as an art. I see conducting, I think conducting is controlling a group of people or someone in a different way. So, how do you feel about conducting in your view and how does it feel to see that something you introduce to the choir, conducting, gets continued for a long time, or for almost 15 years. Yes, of course, uh, when it comes to conducting, I must first uh, say that this opportunity, I got it because of Sir, Sir Francis de Almeida. Uh, as you all know, like he's the key person of our choir. and. Uh, before me, there was a conductor. I must mention uh, his name, Rajitaya. Rajitaya was conducting when we were going for these uh, competitions. So he was doing a good job. I must say that because of him, we knew that there is something called conducting. And uh, when it comes to the carols, uh, he was not there in 2007. 
Then uh, for the carol service, when Hasun Naya and all, like, they were doing the, they were mainly focusing on the organizing part. So uh, we didn't have a conductor. So Sir just say, Sir just mentioned that uh, we need to have a conductor. It should be something coordinated with each and every part and putting your emotions together. So that was also taught to me by Sir. So the like all credit should go to Mr. Almeida. You are the founder of the choir Speranza, a leading youth choir in the choral music industry. Tell us what inspired you to create a choir on your own and how did the experience that you gained from the St. Mercy's Choir being a chorister and of course the choir leader? Having our own choir after schooling, that was the main idea of uh, Sir Francis de Almeida. Not me, the only person who started this choir, I must mention, uh, Speranza started myself, by myself and Nipunisi uh, Mbalabitya, who was the choir leader for Ave Maria uh, for some years. And uh, we thought that we should do, we should start something as Sir said. So that was the starting point. And uh, then it came up uh, with a, a nice way where initially it was Ave Maria Maricela, the past choristers. And then uh, we thought that it's not, it, it shouldn't be only for those two schools and we should get other people as well. So, it was the foundation I got from college then to make it to a place where Esperanza is now in. Master Lakshan Pereira, the choir leader of St. Mercedes Choir for the year 2009, is here with us today. Thank you for being here for this interview. And thank you for having me here as well. Being a chorister teaches us so many things for our lives. I have learned so many things being in this choir. And when we talk about the St. Mercedes Choir, it's so much special because it gives so many opportunities to choristers. So, what you learned being a chorister and a choir leader, and how was the experience you had in the St. Mercedes Choir? Yeah, so I would like to first of all mention about uh, uh, the value of discipline that we learned uh, when we were in the choir because you know like uh, all the uh, uh, events that we participated and there were a few competitions that we also won uh, in uh, those years. So all those uh, achievements uh, and participations needed a discipline right? because when we are practicing back at the chapel of course it's being a chapel right so you have to have the discipline so we i think that is like one of the first places in my life that i really learned the value of discipline now you have become a music teacher in profession how the experience that you got from the choir is helping you now to play the role of a teacher uh, being a choir leader i obviously got uh, my first ever teachings for myself how to teach people okay so that was a big help for my later on career and now you only mentioned about uh, my teaching profession but other than that i perform so uh, in that case also uh, you know you know that we all have our stage fear right so uh, nowadays also we have a, i have a small amount of stage fear still at our time all these things were done by separate teams okay so like there was a team who went for the competition there was a team uh, who uh, kind of uh, performed who uh, sang in the special events in the school and then you had the call so i was like a mutual part me along with some few others were uh, mutual uh, people in all those events but not the others so we wanted to make it a one unit okay so the system was a little bit mixed up, or I would say a little bit messed up at that time. Um, so uh, we tried our best, we succeeded for some amount, okay. But uh, now hearing from you guys, like the current situation, I'm very happy to hear that uh, there's one choir who is like 
looking after all the special events, competitions and carriage and everything. Thank you again for being here. Uh, do you have anything to say for the current choristers? So uh, what I have to say is job well done and I heard some of your future plans. I'm very excited about it. So uh, good luck for you all and hope that you can um, uh, take the choir to another level. So I have seen like uh, now you guys did I think uh, something for uh, the last Christmas uh, like you, because you couldn't have a physical uh, carol you did something uh, online as well I think if I can remember so those are very good things adapting to the situation so uh, good luck with all of that and hopefully uh, uh, I hope that you guys will uh, get a physical carol this time and uh, we'll do anything that uh, we can help uh, to make it a success. And thank you very much again for having me. Usually the choir organizes some events like the carol services and length programs. So are there any remarkable events that happened in the year 2010? Uh, yes, Mali. Uh... In 2010, actually, uh, that's the first carol me and uh, together with Emil and my team, they organized. Uh, it's a, uh, by 2010, actually, we, were, we wanted to celebrate the fifth year uh, for the choir, of the choir. So we wanted to organize some kind of a massive event with regard to the carol services. So what we planned was to have the carol services outside in front of the chapel. So that was the first time we wanted to take the carols from indoor stadium to the out outdoor setup. So we had a lot of exposure as well, a lot of difficulties uh, when organizing that event. Uh, to add to that, uh, that was the first carol, uh, I think, up to now also, which was telecasted uh, on uh, Derana. Reverend Brother Suman Dalis, he was the principal when we were organizing the carols. He gave us a massive support. Uh, without him, we won't be able to uh, do such a massive event. It seems that the 2010 carol service was a special moment in our choir history. So tell us about that experience. In 2010 carols, uh, actually we uh, our past choristers from our school and together with uh, past choristers from Ave Maria convent, we got together and uh, formed Speranza uh, as you as the you know, interview you had with Mr. Shan, that experience we gained through the college actually uh, because of the training we had through the choir. I think uh, most of the choristers now in Speranza uh, have reached professional levels in singing and so we have gained that experience uh, because of the what we gained from college level. After that, I got the opportunity to train the choirs at uh, Holy Cross Gampaha and currently I'm doing at uh, Bolawalana Al Maria Convent and Lala College. So what made me to that level was the experience that I gained from being in the choir, the college choir. All choir leaders we have had has led by example and always managed to keep the bar very high. Shanak and Emil who were previous choir leaders did an excellent job and after handing it over to me they were very much reachable and did a lot of things to help the choir. I'd like to remember that with much appreciation. Uh, taking over from Shanak and Emil was a huge challenge uh, because the choir leader is not only responsible for the upper school choir but also the primary choir, uh, the little ones. Uh, and instead of two choir leaders, there was me this time. So even though I was never isolated, uh, I was supported and mentored by a lot of people, be past choir leaders, 
uh, our choir master Ms. Prashant Peris and Mr. Francis Almeida. Uh, the overall working experience with a massive choir is very interesting and always enjoyable and a lot of good memories that I still cherish for the day. Uh, going down in the memory lane, uh, in my year we won English Day competitions all island and Isurpai competitions for the second consecutive year. We all know winning something next year all island means that we have a dedicated and a well performing choir. Uh, also uh, the year end carols uh, which is inclusive of a lot of choirs from different schools, different sessions and always a big audience is a challenge that I overcame. Being a choir leader was a wonderful opportunity. I got hands-on experience working with a lot of people, a lot of vendors to organizing events, training choristers and nurturing the primary choir which was a lot of fun. And all those experience has turned me into the independent gentleman that I am today. Uh, I should thank our choir master for his guidance and uh, I really admire the dedication and sacrifices you made for the choir. Training a four-part harmony choir is not an easy task at all, but Mr. Francis Almeida is really good at what he does, so he has managed to bring out the best in each and every one of us, so thank you both. Finally, none of this would have been possible without the dedication and the sacrifices made by the entire choir, so a uh, special thanks for all the choristers in my year. Thank you. Mr. Pramukh Elika, the former choir leader of St. Merslin's Choir for the year 2011, is here with us today. We are so great to have you here. Thank you very much. How does it feel to be here in the school premises as a, choir, as a former choir leader and also as an old boy? It was a great pleasure. Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me because we are celebrating the 15th year this year anniversary and then uh, of course it's been an amazing uh, years that we spent here because right now we have a lot of memories to recall, a lot of learnings that we gained, a lot of things that we acquired from us so it's, it's unbelievable and uh, I'm really proud to be as one of the members of the choir before being a leader and then we became a leader and then after that as you mentioned as, a, as an old boy who we studied in these classes. It was, it was a great journey that we had, an absolutely pleasure. Planning events is also another part of a choir leader because we usually organize some annual events. Uh, was it challengeable and how was the help that you received from the following choristers? Yeah, first of all, that, that credit I always have to give to the previous choir leaders and the choir masters who have been and the Reverend Brothers because they have been laying all the foundation for us, for me personally. And also with planning, I would say it's a great help that we receive from the principals as well as our choir. I mean like the voice trainer, Mr. Francis D. Almeida, a remarkable person I think you may, might have heard about the previous stories also. So he was a, he gave us a room and also Mr. Roshan, who's been our choir master for years. And it was not a challenge, but it was something that we learned throughout the journey, how to plan, how to do things on our own, how to get the best out of us. That's, that has been the learning. And now as adults and as being in the corporate market to music, to whatever the things we do, we get the best out of us because of that foundation we see. That is, that is the biggest help that we got from everyone. Are there any sweet memories or a remarkable moment that happened uh, or you experienced uh, back in 2011, the year that you led? I, I mean, like, there are a lot, there are a lot of, uh, if, I mean, like, the moments that I can recall of, but most of the uh, greatest thing that we had to work with the junior choir, which was like grade ones to grade three, to, there, there were many, like people like I recall of Akila, Surya Rachi, and uh, Dasun, and there was entire people who helped us. 
And one of the things, like the most remarkable choral event that we had was not as a leader, but uh, not in my years, but previous years, we had a choir, a biggest uh, carol session in, 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 in outdoors. At, 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 at those days, people said you cannot do something like this in outdoors, but boys took the real good challenge of doing it. We can recall many, I mean, like funny experiences in that also. So I think what we did at the outdoors was one of my remarkable experiences. Master Carlin Pereira, the choir leader for the years 2012 to 2014, thank you for being here with us today, accepting our invitation. No problem. You led the choir for almost three years, 2012, 2013 and 2014. I think that's the longest time period a choir leader stayed in the history of our choir because you had to take the responsibilities way before, I think, two years before the year that you were supposed to be the choir leader. So was it a challengeable experience? It was, I mean, like, you know, I had to work with people who were, like, way more senior than me. Even when we are dealing with other choirs, you know, other artists school and Colombo choirs. So it was a huge, you know, an experience that I never thought I would get, but I got it and I had to, you know, struggle through it. But it worked out pretty well and I think I got a good experience out of it to work with any kind of person. Special event that our choir, the St. Mercedes Choir, participated in your leading years was the Rome Sonio Romani the tour. So uh, tell us about that experience. It was a really good opportunity that we got. Uh, Ten of us went and joined that choir. It was a choir called Scola Cantorum, uh, directed by our choral director Francis de Almeida. Uh, so the choir consists of uh, four schools, 92 singers I think, uh, St. Joseph's, uh, Good Shepherd and Ave Maria. So we were there at the papal audience as well, so we sang there actually. So we were, we were, we were preparing for it for uh, like about uh, three or four months. So we had practices for St. Joseph's and we did a concert in Rome for the Sri Lankan community there. So sweet memories and really good uh, exposure, really good experiences. Except the Rome tour. Uh, are there any sweet memories uh, that you would like to share with us that you experienced when, uh, throughout the years uh, 2012 to 2014? Of course, there's a lot. So, like, uh, so I was the quality for, like, as you mentioned, like two years or three years. Three years. Uh, so we got we got to arrange really nice songs, and it was memorable for almost every other school as well because I meet them now. And they were like, oh, you were in the Marcella Choir, right? You sang this. So it was really nice. You know, it's really nice to get feedback like that even after a like, few years I've, I've passed out from the school as well. Uh, even though I'm, I was the leader, I was the named leader, there was a team behind me. Behind me rather, as in we were on the same level, okay? So it was a team effort, okay? But the city is mostly an effort of Leshan Fernando, okay? Uh, and not in that year as well, like in the, uh, after, the, after that also and before that, he has done a really good job. I, I think he, he, the other leaders will mention that. And he always goes overboard when he has to do decorations for carols. Uh, not, on, on, not only on that year, even the other, other years, they, he, he was doing a massive job and he takes all the choristers to work with him. Sometimes works until late night. So the next day practices, they don't have voices, they get scolded, but they do the job. So that was a Jerusalem city. And we also did a concert called Vivashe on um, that year. And it was mainly done by Tharaka Simla Pitya and uh, Lashan. But we pulled it off, they pulled it off. I, I took care of the choir and it was a really nice event. And, and uh, a choir, an international choir joined it as well. I'm sure Nithil will mention about it. And yeah, so that's about it. And yeah. Thank you for inviting me today and thank you. Um, you're doing a really great job. I'm so happy and I'm so, so, so are the other readers as well. So keep it up. We're so happy about this. Master Nithil Fernando Pulle, the choir leader of St. Mercy's Choir for the year 2015 is here with us today. Thank you for being here. B a choir leader, 
you have to deal with different parties at different points. So I would like to know what kind of a connection that you had with other schools when, uh, when you were leading the choir. Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Uh, in addressing your first question, I'd like to start off, start off by saying how I entered the choir. I, uh, I joined the choir in 2006 as a soprano, then I was in uh, grade 5, I think. Uh, Miss Ratna Fernandapul is the one who actually invited me to this choir. She told me that a guy from Colombo is coming, he, he's a really talented guy, he's a really competent guy uh, who has loads of experience about choral choir. And uh, so I went home and told this to my parents and my parents were also like, okay, you can enroll with the choir. And um, so the experience I got from the choir helped me throughout my life. Throughout this, uh, now it's been six years since I left school. Throughout this six years, the experience I got from the St. Mathurin's Choir has helped me a lot. Uh, so in addressing your question, yes, we have uh, had a lot of relations with the uh, outside choirs of uh, in, outside St. Marcelin Square, such as uh, St. Nicholas, uh, the Euphrasian Square of uh, I Maria, St. Saint Saint Cecilia Square of St. Uh, Joseph's Col College, Colombo. Uh, so, when you took uh, the responsibilities as a choir leader, so what was the standard of this of the choir when you were taking the choir as a leader and how you dealt with that? First of all, I had to say the St. Marcelin's choir had a really good standard. I mean, we didn't have much in number, but in technique and quality-wise, we were up there. Uh, St. Joseph's, I, 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 don't mind, I don't mean to uh, make any uh, uh, derogative statement here, but uh, but uh, St. Joseph's Choir, if you take, it's, it's said to be a really good choir in the country, but I say it's big in number, but uh, when it comes to technique and other stuff, uh, I believe St. Marcelin's Choir is really good. Uh, this is the last question that I'm going to ask for me, but it's very important. If you can give an advice to the future choir leaders who are going to be in the future, what would be the advice that you want to give? There will be a lot of challenges in front of you, um, but I advise you to not see them as challenges, but see them as opportunities that you can excel, excel, excel from. Being a part of the choir was such a great experience. I loved every bit of it. Uh, the practices, the sing-offs we would have in the music room uh, during break time, it was all good and we were like a family. Uh, what really helped me out was the collective team effort of the senior choristers and the teachers involved with um, the help of the choral director, Mr. Francis de Almeida. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge when it came to the carol service in December because we were the first batch to organize it while we were in school, whereas in the other years it was the past pupils who actually uh, organized it. Uh, but we got through, we, I think we did a good job in that, and it was really good. Uh, Maris Prabhasarini was a very different exposure for the choir and also for me. Uh, we got the chance to dive into a different side of music and not just being stuck into the choral side of it. Um, there were a lot of things happening in a very short time and we tried to uh, bring out the most in most of the people to find the um, different talents and incorporate them um, in the stage uh, with a bit of performance as well. Um, it was good, again another team effort. Uh, we got a lot of people involved, um, a bit of more music than our usual traditional music. It was great and we loved the whole experience. In my view, I think when it comes to uh, choosing a choice song for a competition, it's best to go for a song that you can show the true potential of the choir, um, given that it can be done with the voices you have in the, um, in the team as well. 
Um, and also then again, it's a team effort. You should all have fun, enjoy what you're doing and practice, practice, practice. And that will do wonders. I found a great quote about leadership once said by Ronald Reagan. It says, the greatest is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. Well, here we have another leader, the choir leader, Master Anish Dur, the choir leader of St. Marcelin's Choir for the year 2017. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you very much. You were a choir member for almost 10 years, I guess, from being the primary choir leader to the senior choir leader. But you have thought of being a choir leader when you, when you were small, in your small ages. So looking back at those days, how do you feel about the journey that you came so far as the choir leader? Uh, just like you said, um, while looking back, uh, I was just being a consistent member more than being a leader. Uh, I tried to uh, participate in events and just go on with it, just go with the flow and eventually led to being a leader. Well, when we look at the year 2017, we see some important events. What kind of an impact can these outgoing events make on a choir? Mostly it's about reputation because uh, by the time I became the choir leader, uh, we were not in a good, uh, reputable a a choir, so uh, we need to move on in a different direction. Uh, therefore, I was mean a more like a, a base or a foundation rather than being a beacon of reputation or light, as you might say. I'm sure that you had someone that you followed to uh, do the leading part of the choir, to lead the choir to a different level. So I would like to hear a few words upon that. I didn't have an exact role model. I just collected what, what should be collected from every leader, uh, from our uh, primal choir leader, Ashan Fernando, Mr. Ashan Fernando, uh, to the recent uh, Mr. Gavin Fernando. Uh, I wanted to give some good leadership advice and some good leadership skills to the next generation while collecting from my, my past generation. So we thank you again for being here. Had a nice time with you. Master Joseph Viraj Fernando is here with us today, the choir leader of St. Merslin's Choir for the year 2018. Of course, becoming a leader is challenging. So share with us how you embrace this challenge. It was very challenging because uh, I had to come through many things like tension and anxiety, conducting, seeing everything. And uh, with the help of God and the teachers, my fellow members and former leader, and Francis sir. He's the best, uh, he helped me a lot. So it was very easy with those things. And the composition you chose to sing for the choir, Near My Go Today, is a very rare composition and also it's complicated. So how have you dealt with that? The Near My God is a very old composition. Uh, the James L. Stephen, uh, he was the one who pre-created that composition, that a cappella version. Uh, for the composition, uh, I wanted to buy that notation and uh, unexpectedly uh, we found a notation. I don't know how it happened. Uh, so then we uh, we had to go through the notation, every note, every single note because it was a cappella. So it must be perfect. So then we practiced many times. Uh, so balancing nine parts uh, wasn't so easy. So our teacher helped us a lot. Uh, then uh, we practiced many times. Then uh, it became so easy. Now oh, you all are singing. <laughs> I heard many times, uh, and I'm ha I'm very happy. 
So let's talk about the near my god. How do you felt as a choir leader to miss just one mark to win the competition? I know it's a strange feeling and it's hard to put into words, but uh, tell us how you felt. Yeah, uh, we were very sad that time. I remember, still I remember, and uh, I think I cried on that day uh, because uh, all the dedication, everything, how many practices we had. Uh, that's what. That's why we cried. Uh, I don't know. It's very hard to explain. <laughs> December 18, I think uh, we had chance to participate. Uh, there was a huge uh, concert called uh, Joy to the World at Nelum Kokana, Kalam. So that's all about the events and uh, I want to thank my assistant choir leaders. Uh, there were many assistant choir leaders. Uh, first of all, uh, Miuri Fernando, then Nisa Nemita, then Anjana Kulakulasori, then Adam Kit Pereira. So, and uh, I want to thank Ms. Shania, she helped me a lot. Then uh, Francis Sir, he's amazing, still he's amazing. Uh, Becoming a choir leader is not an easy task because the leader is the one who is responsible for his followers, for the good or for the bad that can happen. Master Roshan Jaisinghar, the choir leader of St. Merslin's Choir for the year 2019, hope you are doing well and thanks for being here today with us. Staying in the choir for a long time like 10 years and then becoming a choir leader can be happen if you didn't have a passion to sing to the choir, to music. I would like to take you back in 2019. Can you remember the first practice that you held as the choir leader for the first time? Well, <laughs> talking about my first practice, I had uh, about 20 to 25 choristers on that day. And uh, I had conducted practices in the previous years uh, when I was the assistant choir leader but my first practice as the choir leader felt a lot more different so that's when I realized that I have something to do I, ha uh, I have to be much more responsible than I was in the previous years because this year I am the choir leader so it started and uh, the practice the practice was in well it was conducted well and the year went on and something happened very special in your year in 2019 which is you won the national level competitions which is organized by the ministry how you felt when you heard the announcement that the St. Mercy's Choir has won the competition. When I started my year as the choir leader, my main goal was to lead our choir to be the champions in ministry, in ministry singing commissions. So, in that moment, they, they announced our choir as the champions, which means that I was able to achieve my goal so I really don't I really, I don't have words to explain how I felt at that very moment. Of course, it's a memorable moment, not only for you but yeah. for the choir and for the school. In a school choir, we see a lot of students, and they belong to different age categories. Especially, the junior group plays a major role in a choir because they beautify the choir with their voices, with their small voices and they are the future of the choir. So, how was the experience that you had with working with them and yeah, how you felt and what was the experience? Well, talking about the juniors, they sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, uh, it's hard to control them because uh, they can't stay in one place in one way and sometimes they don't understand what I say and 
it's true because they are much playful than us that age so i had so honestly i had to be strict with them sometimes but i really enjoyed their company had a really nice time talking to you and thank you again for being with us today thank you for inviting me again Here with us, the present choir leader of St. Mercy's Choir of Masala College, Nigambo, of course, one of my friends, Master Chamit Fernando. Life is made of challenges and we have to face them. But if we try to run away from those challenges rather than facing them successfully, then we become failures. Chamit, it's no secret that we live in a challenging time because of this COVID-19 pandemic. But in the last year in 2020 we were able and we were introduced a new path new concept from the choir to look at the performance to look at the skills of the choir through youtube so how did this concept came up and what was what is the story behind it uh, actually uh, when we talk about this uh, new concept uh, it wasn't actually planned at the beginning of the year because uh, 2020 uh, there were some new concepts i don't say no uh, but uh, not in this way uh, and uh, with my crew i introduced a new concept uh, virtual concept uh, so uh, due to the rising and uh, down of uh, covid-19 situation in the country uh, actually 2020 had to be continued uh, virtually as you said chami uh, it's obvious that we missed some events and we organized events like carol services lent and program and we could see them through youtube uh, how did the process took part yeah actually uh, earlier as i said uh, in the previous question uh, year 2020 was planned like uh, the first event we planned was anima kristi 3 uh, because uh, this anima kristi is means the soul of christ so uh, it was a uh, first uh, i think a lentum program was done from 2010 or some before uh, but uh, this anima christi this uh, title was gained by uh, master anish dirk in 2017 uh, so when we uh, went through with the year uh, and uh, i actually i'm a bit of a practicing person uh, i i mean i'm mostly concerned about practices uh, so for the practices uh, first i uh, used whatsapp recordings Uh, I send the choristers recordings and they have to send me back within a day. Uh, but uh, earlier we named it as COVID-19 project. But later with the release of the Singhal hymn, with the Singhal hymn uh, with choral parts, Magadhi uh, Panal Raginda. So with that uh, we renamed the project as We Are the. Uh, so uh, we did a Christmas mashup virtually with even with the juniors. That was the first time I did uh, a virtual cover with juniors. earlier we we did we are with only seniors uh, so uh, and our leaders our leader board did uh, that christmas to me uh, and it was a tough call because of the video we had to make it uh, during the isolation period it was a perfect ending for 2020 apart from that i want to pay attention because most of the people think uh, being a in my personal opinion in a choir the main thing is singing number one and singing discipline uh, then uh, when when i uh, look at our choristers uh, and i knew that our media guy steve can uh, do way better of video editing uh, so that's how i contacted him and uh, throughout the year all the videos that they have made was done by steve and uh, anyhow anyway we uh, took the beat box track uh, after that uh, when i listened to it the raw track uh, there was some new colors with the beatbox so i thought of uh, improving that concept 
uh, and we did that for that Christmas to me and also in one golf as well. Uh, so uh, I think being in a choir doesn't mean that you are just a singer. There are a lot of social talents and inner talents that you can get from the choir uh, and good social learning for the future.